the uh, different theorems. So under that, uh, what is a superposition theorem? Or uh, what is a reciprocity theorem? And Thevenin's theorem and uh, Norton's theorem. So in this class, I discuss about the what is maximum power transfer theorem and what is intelligence theorem. So first we discuss about what is maximum power transfer theorem. So what is maximum and transfer theorem means this means the source resistance is equal to the load resistance then you get the maximum power generally the when you get the maximum power means whenever the source resistance must be equal to the load resistance then you get the maximum power transfer theorem so what is maximum power transfer theorem states that the dc voltage source will deliver maximum power to the variable load resistors only when the load resistance is equal to the source resistance. When they give the maximum power, when the DC source will be give the maximum power, when it will be delivered the maximum power, when it will be delivered the maximum power to the variable load resistor, only when the load resistance is equal to the source resistance. When you get the maximum power, when the source resistance is equal to the load resistance must be there. Then only we get the maximum power. So what is the maximum power transfer theorem? When you take about the DC voltage source, we we'll deliver maximum power to the variable load resistor only when the load resistance is equal to the source resistance. So similarly, when you get the maximum power transfer theorem states that the AC voltage source will deliver maximum power to the variable complex load only. That means when the load impedance is equal to the complex conjugate of the source impedance is nothing but the AC in terms of the volt, AC voltage source or in terms of the DC voltage source, they must be same. So resistance is equal to load resistance. Here, the load impedance is equal to the complex conjugate of the source impedance. That means, if suppose in DC, when you take the source resistance is 2 ohms, in the load resistance also 2 ohms. In AC, that means the impedance, but means re resistance and reactive bonds. When it is 2 plus J3, that is the load impedance. So complex conjugate of source impedance means 2 minus J3. 2 minus J3. Like that, the both in AC and DC, the load is in DC, load resistance is equal to source. Then only we get the maximum power. In AC, load impedance is equal to the complex conjugate of the source impedance. That is nothing but the maximum trans power transfer theorem. What is the proof of this maximum power transfer theorem? So here, this is the two terminal network. This is the load resistance. So for the maximum power transfer theorem, you follow the rule of the Thevenin's circuit. So first you have to find out the Thevenin's resistance and Thevenin's voltage. The Thevenin's voltage, um, when you find out the Thevenin's resistance and Thevenin's voltage, so whatever the source resistance is, Thevenin's resistance and load resistance is low. RL. Whenever RL is equal to RTH, then you get the maximum power transfer theorem. So replace any two terminal linear network or circuit to the left side of variable load resistance having resistance of RL ohms with the Thevenin's equivalent circuit. We know the Thevenin's equivalent circuit resembles a practical voltage source. So for this circuit, you have to find out the Thevenin's resistance and Thevenin's voltage. Then you have to put the load resistance here. So what is the proof? Now you say the amount of the power dissipated across the load. So what is the amount of the power dissipated across the load? Uh, so we know that the, from the load resistance, what is the current flowing I or IL? So generally power is equal to V into I, I square R or V square by R. 
So here, when you have to find out the power at the load resistance, we know the value of current and resistance. Then you get the value PL is equal to IL square RL. I square RL. I square RL. So substitute I is equal to in the place of I. We know that what is I here? I is equal to total current is equal to VTH by RTH plus RL because RTH and RL are series. So the current I is equal to V by R. So VTH by RTH plus RL. So substitute this here in the above equation. So load resistance is equal to in the I's I square we substitute VTH by RTH plus RL square plus RL. RL square into RL. So PL is equal to VTH square as VTH square into RL by RTH plus RL whole square. RTH plus RL whole square. So in equation 1. So condition for maximum power transfer for maximum or minimum first derivative will be 0. First derivative will be 0. So differentiate equation 1 with respect to RL and equate to 0. So differentiate equation 1 that is differentiate power with respect to RL and it equate to 0. So when you have to differentiate VTH square by RTH plus RL whole square into 1 minus first you have to differentiate uh, RTH plus RL whole square and then you have to differentiate VTH square minus RL into 2 in, into 2 into RTH plus RL by RTH plus RL whole power 4 equal to 0. So here RTH RL plus RL whole square minus 2 RL into RTH plus RL is equal to 0. So when you have to get this condition RTH plus RL common then RTH plus RL minus 2 RL is equal to 0. So for this condition you get RTH minus RL is equal to 0. So we say that RTH is equal to RL or RL equal to RTH. So when you get the maximum power source resistance, source resistance you have taken as RTH. What is load resistance you have taken as RL. So RTH is equal to RL or RL is equal to RTH. This means that if the value of load resistance is equal to the value of flow, uh, source resistance that is Thevenin's resistance then the power dissipate across the load will be maximum value. So whenever the load resistance is equal to the load source resistance then the power dissipated across the load will be the maximum value. So the value of maximum power transfer theorem substitute RL is equal to RTH and PL is equal to PL max in equation 1. So we have to substitute R in this equation 1. RL is equal to RL is equal to RTH and PL is equal to PL max. Then you get PL maximum is equal to VTH square into in the place of RL we have to substitute RTH by RTH plus RTH whole square. So PL max is equal to VTH square into RTH by 4 RTH square. So PL max is equal to VTH square by 4 RTH. So PL max equal to VTH square by 4 RL since RL equal to RTH. So either you have to tell that V square by 4 RL or V square by 4 RL because RL is equal to RTH. Therefore, the maximum amount of power transferred to the load is PL max is equal to VTH square by 4 RL or VTH square by 4 RTH. So, the efficiency of the maximum power transfer, we can calculate the efficiency of maximum power transfer N max using the formula N max is equal to PL max by PS. PL max by PS. So this is equation 2. So where PL max is the maximum amount of power transferred to the load and PS is the amount of power generated by the source. Generated by the source. So the amount of power generated by the source is 
PS is equal to I square RTH plus I square RL. I square RTH plus I square RL. So, PS equal to 2 into I square RTH since RL is equal to RTH. Since RL equal to RTH. So, substitute I equal to VTH by 2 into RTH in the above equation. Then PS equal to 2 into VTH into 2 RTH into 2 RTH. So, PS equal to 2 into VTH square by 4 RTH square into RTH. So, PS equal to VTH square by 2 into RTH. 2 into RTH. So, substitute PL max and the PS in equation 2. So, N max equal to VTH square by 4 RTH by VTH square by 2 RTH. So, N maximum is equal to half. So, when you can, we can represent the efficiency of the maximum power transfer in terms of percentage, that is percentage N max is equal to N max into 100 percentage. So, percentage N max is equal to half into 100 percent that is equal to 50 percent. Therefore, the efficiency of maximum power transfer theorem is 50 percent. The efficiency of a maximum power transfer is always 50 percent. 50 percent. So, how you calculate the maximum power transfer theorem is find the maximum power that can be delivered to the load resistance RL of the circuit shown in the figure. So, generally, whatever you have to find out this uh, uh, Thevenin's, uh, Thevenin's circuit, then what we have to do means when, when the circuit is like this. So, for this circuit, what we can do means first, first you have to find out VTH. So, how to find out VTH? In order to find the Thevenin's circuit to the left side of tunnel AB, we should remove the 20 ohm resistor from the network by opening the terminals AB. The modified circuit diagram is shown in the following. So, first when you have to find out where we have to find out. So, the whatever the figure they have to be given, we get the maximum power when row resistance is equal to source resistance. So, for that, first you have to find out the uh, uh, Thevenin's resistance and Thevenin's voltage. And then you have to substitute the load resistance. Then these two must be equal. Then you get the maximum power. So for that already I would tell about how you find out the Thevenin's. Wherever we have to find out. First you have to open the terminals. And then you have to calculate the Thevenin's voltage. So how you calculate the Thevenin's voltage. So by applying the nodal analysis here. So, V1, so V1 minus 20 by 5 and plus V1 by 10. So, here when you get V1 minus 20 by 5, V1 by 10 minus 4 because that is the current source is equal to 0. So, 2 V1 minus 40 plus V1 minus 40 by 10 is equal to 0. So, 3 V1 minus 80 equal to 0. So, V1 is equal to 80 minus 3, 80 by 3 volts. So, the voltage across the 10 ohm resistor is V10. So, we want to voltage. So, when you have to find out the voltage, so uh, I want to find out the voltage across 10 ohm resistor, then the same voltage is there. So, V10 ohm is equal to minus 4 into 10 that is equal to minus 40 volts. So, substituting the value of V1 and V10 ohms in the above equation. So, 80 by 3 minus 40 minus applying KVL for this equation, VTH is equal to 0. So, VTH is equal to 200 by 3 volts. Then you have to find out the Thevenin's resistance. So, how you have to find out the Thevenin's resistance? Whatever, the, wherever you have to find out, First, you have to open there and if there is any voltage sources must be there, you have to short. If there is current source must be there, you have to open. Then you have to assign some current is flowing here. So, for this circuit, 5 and 10 ohms are in parallel. That is 5 into 10 by 5 plus 10 and it is series with 10 ohm resistor. So, RTH is equal to 
5 into 10 by 5 plus 10 plus 10. So we get the 40 by 3 ohms. So 40 by 3 ohms. So now we have to observe this figure. So in Thevenin's theorem, we have to calculate the equivalent circuit to the left side of tunnel AB. We can use this circuit. So we get the voltage is 200 by 3 and the um, uh, resistance will be 45 3. So replay, now we have to find out the wherever you have to find out. We have to plus, place that lower resistance here. So replace the part of the circuit which is the left side of the tunnel AB of the given circuit with the above evidence equivalent circuit. So the resultant circuit diagram is as shown in figure. So for this, so that is uh, what is the uh, RL you have to find out that is uh, we can find the maximum power then the delivered to the load resistance RL using the formula. So PL max is equal to we know that VTH square by 4 RTH. What is VTH? 200 by 3. What is RTH? 40 by 3. So PL max is equal to 200 by 3 whole square by 40 by 3. So PL max is equal to 250 by 3 watts. Therefore, the maximum power that will be delivered to the load resistance RL of the given circuit is 250 by 3 watts. 250 by 3 watts. This is the maximum power delivered to the load. So, because here you have to put RT, already we have to find RTH. RTH is nothing but the RL. RTH is nothing but the RL. So, V square by 4 RTH or V square by you put 4 RL because 40 by 3 ohms RTH that is equal to RL. 40 by 3. So, then how you get the maximum power means PL max is equal to VTH square by 4 RTH. This is about the maximum power transfer theorem. Maximum power means the source resistance is equal to the load resistance. So, I take this another problem in terms of the AC circuits. So, find the Thevenin's equivalent circuit of the network AB and the load impedance for maximum power transfer. Also, find the magnitude of the maximum power transfer to the load. So, this is the circuit they have to find. So, across AB you have to find. So, first you have to open this AB. In the first step, we have to find out the ZTH because now we have to find out the what we have to find out in terms of the Thevenin's impedance because it is the AC circuit. So, so when you have to find out the Thevenin's impedance, then what is a formula? First, wherever you have to find out, you have to open that part and wherever the current source must be there, you have to short. Now we have to open and the voltage source must be there, you have to short. So, from this figure, when you observe that Z1 and Z2 are in parallel. So, Z1 is 8 ohms and Z2 is 6 ohms. So, it is in the, in this is the reactance part. So, put, we put J into 8. For a capacitance part, minus J6. J8 for inductive part and minus J6 for capacitive part. So, Z1, Z2 are in parallel. So, Z1, Z2 by Z1 plus Z2. When you have to uh, product the two terms, both are in polar form. When you have to add the two terms, both are in rectangular form. So, we get the value is 24 at an angle of minus 90. Now, you have to find out the VTH. So, when you have to find out the VTH across AB, so first you have to open the terminal. So, when you have to find out the VTH here, Whatever the across any impedances must be there, you have to find out there. Then you get the voltage. We have to find out voltage across there. Then you have the, the same voltage will be obtained the VTH. So applying the KVL equation, so we get 10 at an angle of 0 minus J8 plus J already minus of minus plus J6I equal to 0. So 10 at an angle of 0 equal to J21. So uh, like that, uh, generally I is equal to V by uh, J, J8 
minus J6. Then only you get the current. I is equal to 5 at an angle of minus 90. But the, we want the voltage across minus J6 ohms. So, Vth equal to Zt into It. There is minus J6 into 5 at an angle of minus 90. So, Vth is equal to 30 at an angle of minus 90. So, we get Vth value and Zth value. So, then what is the Zd, Zdl value here? Zd, whatever the source resistance must be there, that is equal to load resistance. So, but it is a complex conjugate. When it will be the minus, the load resistance will be plus. When source will be plus, load resistance will be minus. So, Zdl is equal to conjugate of Zth. So, that is equal to 24 at an angle of 90 degrees. So, and hence the circuit is purely inductive. Therefore, power will be 0. This is maximum power transfer theorem. Next, we go about the Millman's theorem. Next, we go about the Millman's theorem. So, what is Millman's theorem? Means for A, um, number of voltage sources must be there. So, for any voltage sources, the impedance must be in the series. So, this will be, if there is the n number of voltage sources, that is V1, V2, V3 and so on to Vn, having the internal impedance or internal resistance, that is Z1, Z2, Z3, so on to Zn, or connected in parallel. These are the series, the sources are connected in parallel across the load that is ZL. This arrangement may be replaced by a single voltage source in series with the equivalent impedance. Millman's, this is circuit is nothing but the Millman's equivalent circuit. Millman's equivalent circuit means if any similarly thevenous, if any number of voltage sources which are in the internal impedances, these all are connected in parallel. These will be replaced by a single voltage source in series with the equivalent impedance. Is nothing but the Millman's equivalent circuit. So, what have you find out the for maximum power when you have to find out the VTH and RTH. But here there is the direct equation must be there. We have to find out V equivalent, Z equivalent in the terms of formula. V equivalent is equal to V1, Y1 plus V2, I2 plus V3, I3 plus so on to Vn, Yn. Y1 plus Y2, Yn, so on to Yn. By, by, by it will be the parallel must be there. And that means the in the parallel, the current must be different. So, that will be in the form of the admittance name. Impedance is nothing but the, the voltage by current. Admittance means reciprocal of the impedance. That is, uh, reciprocal of in, impedance means I by V. I by V. Like that we get in terms of V1 into Y1 plus V2 Y2 plus V3 Y3 so on to Vn Yn. Y1 plus Y2 plus Y3 so on to Yn. Z equivalent is equal to 1 by Y1 plus Y2 plus Y3 so on to Yn. So, where Z1, Z2, Z3 so on to Zn are impedances. Y1, Y2, Y3 are the admittance. So, Y is equal to 1 by Z equivalent. This theorem is applicable only to solve the parallel branch with one impedances or resistances connect to voltage or current sources. So, the voltage source can be converted into current source or the current source will be converted to the voltage source by using the source transformation technique. So, by solving the Billman's theorem, we have taken the formula is V equivalent is equal to V1 Y1 plus V2 Y2 so on to Vn Yn by Y1 plus Y2 so on to Yn. By solving the Z equivalent is equal to 1 by Y1 plus Y2 plus Y3 so on to Yn. So, so the simple circuit we have taken, a circuit is given as shown in the figure. Find out the voltage across resistance and current to 2 ohm resistor. So, for each voltage source, their internal impedances must be there. So, for V equivalent, have you find out V equivalent? So, 2 ohms you have to find. So, first you have to eliminate that 2 ohms. So, then how you find out V equivalent? 50 by 5 minus 20 by 
20 plus 16 by 4. 16 by generally uh, that is uh, some algebraic sum of the currents. Current I is equal to V by Z1. V by Z2, V by Z3 or V by R1, V by R2, V by R3. So, V by R is nothing but V into Y1 because 1 by R is nothing but the conductance, V into G1. 1 by Z is nothing but the admittance, V into Y1. So, we get, first we have to terms in terms of resistance, 50 by 5 minus 20 by 20 plus 16 by 6 that is 1 by 5 plus 1 by 20 plus 1 by 4 that is equal to 26 volts 26 volts how you find the equivalent uh, resistance so all are in parallel so rth is equal to 1 by 1 by 5 plus 1 by 20 plus 1 by or simply you get in terms of admittance form or Conductance form G1 plus G2 plus G3. So, 1 by 1 by 5 plus 1 by 20 plus 1 by 4 that is equal to 2 ohms. So, no, you can easily find the current at 2 ohms resistor. According to that, I is equal to what is VTH 26? What is RTH 2? What is RL they given to 26 by 2 plus 2 that is 6.5 amps so uh, and they all uh, and they all ask about the what is a voltage across load impedance so voltage across load is vl is equal to current into so that is equal to voltage across load v is equal to i into r what is i that is 6.5 what is r there 2 ohms so 6.5 into 2 that is equal to 30 volts this is the Millman's theorem in terms of the DC circuits. When you have go about the Millman's theorem for AC circuit, so the whatever the uh, figure will be circuit will be there. So 5 ohms minus J3 ohms, 2 ohms and J4 ohms and the two voltage sources that is 10 at an angle of 0 and 20 at an angle of 45. So uh, we, we know the solution will be V1 is 10 at an angle of 0. V2 is 20 at an angle of 45. Y1 is equal to 1 by Z1. What is Z1? Z1 is 5. So, 1 by 5. And Y2 is equal to 1 by Z2. What is Z2? That is equal to 1 by minus J3. So, equal to like this. So, V equivalent is equal to V1 Y1 plus V2 Y2 by Y1 plus Y2. So, you have to substitute the values here. Then you get the V equivalent is equal to 13.94 at an angle of 60.97. And when you have to find out Z equivalent, Z equivalent is equal to 1 by Y1 plus Y2 or simply 1 by Y equivalent. So, what is 1 by Y1? Y1 is 0 0.2 plus what is 1 by y2 is 0 0.33 at an angle of 0 that is equal to 2.59 at an angle of minus 58.74 like this we have to find out the uh, Millman's theorem in terms of DC and AC circuits so in the Millman's equivalent circuit in this uh, problem you have to find V equivalent and Z equivalent so, we get the value across AB that is 2 and J4 ohms. So, how you find out the I is equal to V equivalent by Z equivalent plus ZL. That is 13.94 at an angle of 60.97 by 2.5 at an angle of minus 58.74 plus 2 plus J4. So, then the, what is the current across branch AB is 3.68 at an angle of 32.79. This is about Millman's theorem. Next one we go about the intelligence theorem. What is intelligence theorem means? This theorem states that the algebraic sum of the powers in any n number of branches of network is 0. This theorem states that the algebraic sum of the powers in n branches of any network. So, whatever the power, when you have to find out the total power in the circuit, it will be goes to zero, then the intelligence theorem will be satisfied. So, this theorem states that any time t 
the algebraic sum of the instantaneous power in n branches of any network is zero if kcl and kvl satisfied mathematically summation of vk ik equal to zero where vk is instantaneous voltage drop in each branch and ik is instantaneous current in each branch so if uh, if the algebraic sum of the powers is equal to zero then the thevenin's the theorem intelligence theorem will be satisfied so they given the current will be one circuit will be like this so here uh, v not v1 v2 v3 v4 and the impedances z1 z2 z3 z4 they given the value v1 is 6 volts v2 is 4 volts and v3 is 3 volts v4 is 4 1 volts and i1 is 5 amps i2 is 2 amps i3 is 3 amps i4 and 3 3 amps so totally they given the value so we know the power is equal to v into i so here for the step one verification of kcl so at node 1 sum of the currents entering to the node is equal to sum of the currents i1 is equal to i2 plus i3 so 5 is equal to 2 plus 3 that is equal to 5 at node b what is at node b i3 is equal to i4 so i3 is equal to i4 is 3 so verification of uh, kvl so there are two meshes are there this is one loop and this is one loop so we apply the kvl equation for this loop then you get minus v1 minus v2 plus v0 equal to 0 so v1 is minus 6 v2 is 4 and v0 is 10 like that in the second mesh some of the that means algebraic sum of rising will be potential will be taken as plus dropping will be minus the algebraic sum of the voltages is zero that is kvl the algebraic sum of the currents is equal to zero that is kcl so v2 is 4 v3 is 3 and v4 is zero so hence kvl and kcl must be satisfied so that means when minus 6 minus 4 plus 10 how much it will be zero 4 minus 3 minus 1 4 minus 4 that is equal to 0 so then the uh, sum of the powers must be equal to 0 here i1 is equal to i2 plus i3 i1 is 5 i2 is 2 plus i3 is 3 2 plus 3 also 5 so 5 equal to 5 and node b also the current must be equal to i3 is 3 i4 is 3 so algebraic sum of the powers in n number of nodes must be equal to 0 here kcl and kvl must be satisfied so the intelligence theorem will be proved next one is compensation theorem compensation theorem so what is compensation theorem means in this theorem when the resistance suppose we have to take one resistor that is rl of a branch in a linear network it changes to rl plus delta r if suppose this rl when you observe carefully for the figure 1 and figure 2 in the figure 1 the resistance will be r suppose this resistance will be changes to rl plus delta r there is a change in the current there is some here the current will be i and here the current is i plus delta i and we can obtain the change in the current delta i by adding a compensative voltage source vc that is i into delta rl in series with the rl plus delta rl by replacing all other sources in the network by internal resistance so when you have to change a any terminal in the network the current will also change suppose the resistance rl of the branch in a linear network will be changes to rl plus delta rl then the change in the current also delta i in the same branch so we can obtain this change in current delta i so first how you have to obtain this current means by adding a compensative voltage we have add some compensating voltage 
that is v is equal to what is the current uh, how you have to find out this change of the current means what is the current into change of resistance that is vc equal to i into delta r so in series with the rl plus delta or l so to directly find delta i using compensation theorem for the circuit shown in the figure we have to replace that circuit by then we apply the following steps for the definition so adding the compensating voltage vc equal to i into delta r in series with rl plus delta r in the circuit shown in the figure so first we have to find out the thevenin's resistance rth of source network of the circuit replacing the entire source network rth only so rth and generally the change will be uh, rl is equal to delta rl and vc equal to i into delta or l so here we have to be replace the voltage source of the source network with a short circuit then you have to be re replace the current source with open circuit whatever the voltage source must be there you have to replace with short and whatever the current source must be there you have to be open so replaced by thevenin's voltage of the source network the final transfer circuit where rth is equal to thevenin's resistance of the network so applying kvl for this circuit rth into delta i plus rl plus delta r into delta i plus vc this is algebraic sum of the voltages is equal to zero so how you find out the delta i is minus vc by rth plus rl plus delta r so when you have to find out the how much of the compensating voltage is there when you have to change the resistances so automatically the current must be changes how you find out that uh, current means compensative current means so that current is equal to vc is generally minus vc by rth plus rl plus delta r l so what is the proof and derivation of this compensation theorem is already how to find out vth and rth with respect to rl and by compensating voltage vth rth so i will be replaced to i dash that is i plus delta i and rl is equal to rl plus delta rl so for that have you find out the figure uh, current in this circuit i is equal to vth by rth plus rl so when, then in figure 5 what is the current is equal to i is equal to i dash is equal to i plus delta i so that is equal to vth plus rth plus rl plus delta rl so delta i is equal to vth by rth plus rl plus delta rl minus i minus i this is about the compensation theorem that means substituting the value of i from the above equation uh, delta i is equal to minus vc by rth plus rl plus delta i whatever you have to see in the same formula in equation one is same for this formula so this compensation theorem will be proved that is delta i is equal to minus vc by rth plus rl plus delta r same when you observe here delta i is equal to minus vc by rth plus rl plus delta r so here this will be find directly so when you have to find out in terms of vth and rth also we get the same value so this is about the compensation theorem so in this class we discuss about the what is maximum power transfer theorem what is milman's theorem telegen's theorem and compensation theorem thank you